Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams, the host of the Membership Masters podcast. I'm a self-employed, location-independent online entrepreneur, and I've built multiple million-dollar memberships. I've helped thousands of other people start, build, and grow membership sites, too. I started this podcast to help business owners just like you create incredible memberships and subscriptions by interviewing some of the most successful online entrepreneurs in the world, experts in marketing, branding, sales and retention. Today's show is going to be a great one. On this week's Membership Masters podcast, I welcome Jeff Woods, the vice president of The One Thing. If you have never read the incredible book, The One Thing by the billionaire Gary Keller, go order it right now. It was one of the pivotal books in our journey to becoming successful online entrepreneurs. On today's podcast, Jeff and I go deep on how he became the leader of The One Thing Publishing company and the one thing community the membership community and revenue driver behind the book on today's show you are going to learn how to network and make the connections you need to make your business goals and life goals a reality how to hire the best people to help you make your membership a success and take it to the next level and one of the most unique and amazing sales page tactics I have ever ever seen that got me so excited i almost fell out of my chair on air y'all i even choked on my coffee you gotta listen to this it's one of the best tactics i've ever seen not only to get people to convert to your membership on the sales page but also to grow your email list it's really really cool you got to check that out i had an incredible time talking to jeff woods on today's podcast and i know you are going to enjoy today's conversation too but before we get started i've got one question are you ready to become a membership master today? All right, let's go. Welcome to the Membership Masters podcast brought to you by membershipmasters.com. This is the podcast where we teach you how to get and keep more members every single month. I've helped thousands of people start, build, and grow memberships, and I interview some of the biggest membership owners anywhere online. My goal is to help you build a million-dollar membership of your own, brick by brick. Let's do it together. Come on. Jeff Woods, welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Man, I am, I am, I am pumped to talk to you because I had a great opportunity to talk to you a lot one time, and I couldn't do it. We were, we were at, uh, we were at ClickFunnels headquarters at uh, uh, Russell Bun Brunson was doing a funnel hackathon, right? And uh, me and Jocelyn, my wife, got there uh, the first day. And you know how it is when you go to a conference and it's like, like I'm scoping the room, who's in here, who do I want to meet, who do I want to hang out with, what's my, who's, my, who's my top 10 on the kill list, right? <laughs> right? And uh, so I'm looking around and then all of a sudden, like halfway through the first day, man, I felt terrible. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go back to the hotel and lay down. Next day, felt worse. And it just kept getting worse and worse, man. And I remember slowly, like from across the room the first day, there was a cough and then another cough and then another cough. And it turns out like half the people in that room got the flu, like during the funnel hackathon. We talked to so many people afterwards that were like, dude, day two, I was, there were people laying in the back corner, passed out. So I didn't want to infect you because I felt sick. That's why oh I didn't gosh. get to talk to you. I, as I much, did not right? get it. So thank you very much. Yeah, man. You were like in the middle and I felt like the edges were just like, like the plague was, if only we knew as much about social distancing and masks yeah, as we right. do now, maybe back then we could have prevented the funnel hacking flu from spreading. That's right. Awesome, dude. Now, where, where are you at right now? Where are you at? I am based out of Austin, Texas currently. Now, are you, you're, are you from Austin? Are you from No, I, I grew up in Southern California. Okay, okay. What, what, what took you to Texas? How'd you end up over there? Starting this company. So I was in, when I was in Southern California, I was in medical device sales. <clears throat> and, you know, I think you can relate to this, Shane, where people are at a position in their life where professionally things are good, but something's missing. Mm. You know, I was lacking fulfillment. I, I sold medical devices in hospitals, which was an amazing job. I got to sell a device that actually saved lives, got to wear scrubs, tried to get my wife to call me McDreamy. She's very good at saying no, by the way. <laughs> and uh, that, I just knew I was meant for more, but I didn't have a compelling reason to make a change. And, and two things happened that set this whole thing in motion, which was a colleague of mine had a stroke when he was 35. And I remember my wife and I just ha uh, had our first child, bought a house in Orange County, and my wife decided to become a stay-at-home mom. 
And I was standing in my kitchen wondering if what happened to my colleague had happened to me, what would happen to my family? And then the very next week, my company changed my commission structure and I lost 40% of my income. Oh, wow. Those two things back to back, I started asking some different questions. And you ever heard the Jim Rohn quote that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Live and die by it, baby, every day. I I looked at my five and had had an amazing sense of gratitude because I'm going, these are amazing friends. But the aha was if I wanted to wake up being a business owner that made a big impact in the world, how many people am I investing time with who are business owners that are making a big impact in the world? The answer was zero. Mm. And that set me on a journey just to upgrade my five. And it was our national sales meeting. I remember walking into this big ballroom and, I, and on the stage was a PowerPoint slide and it, it was a copy of the one thing, the book. And then Jay Papazan, the co-author with Gary Keller was the keynote and he just blew my mind. I cornered him when he came off stage and that began a relationship. And little did I know that Gary and Jay had a problem because the one thing had become one of the highest rate business books of all time. But Gary's one thing is being chairman and CEO of Keller Williams, the real estate company, for those of you that know it. And Jay's one thing is writing books with Gary. They were looking for somebody whose one thing was the one thing. And that became my opportunity. So Gary and Jay are here in Austin. So I had to move my family to, to come here to start the company with them. Oh, wow. So now, so how, okay, hold on. I think you, you, I think you fast forwarded on me. <laughs> like, so how did, so did you move to Austin to get the job or was it like this conversation happened and they were like, you know, if you I come down to, to Austin. Austin. We, we did the interview process. I was in Southern California, but it was very clear up front that the person that was going to run this company needed to be in Austin. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it would require relocation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how big's your family? I got two kids. Daphne's seven. Dean's four. Seven and four. You got a boy and a girl. That's yeah. right, man. You can have. I, I, I got a boy and a girl too. Are you done, or are you gonna have more? Uh, my wife says we're going for a third. Okay, well, so that means you're having a third. <laughs> That's ex- dude. I was always scared to make the leap. Like after we had two, and I got you know you get the boy and the girl, and you're like I'm good. And I was like, you know, I'm an old football coach, man, and I'm like. I'm playing man coverage right now. I like man coverage. It's aggressive. We can blitz sometimes. Going to zone is a different game. Going to zone is a different world, man. I don't know if I can handle those voids on all that grass, right? I'm going to lose one somewhere and uh, not do it, dude. But you're you're done. That was a good answer. If your wife ever listens to this, she'll she'll know what's going on. You know what I mean? All right. So you moved to Austin. This this fascinates me, like how opportunities present themselves. Um, if, if you put yourself in the right place, you'll be in the right place at the right time, right? Dude, you want to dive into this? It's crazy how it happens. Yeah, man. Like I, I do. I talk because I think I've got a similar path that I followed, and I think everybody needs to hear stories like this because sure. this is how things happen. So you corner the guy on the stage. I'm sure that he wasn't just like I, you're hired. Like no. how does how does that like span out where you, you gave yourself this opportunity? Yeah. When I realized I needed to upgrade my five, when I realized I needed to surround myself with business owners, I started going to meetup groups groups and networking events and masterminds. And kind of like you said, like I walk in the room and I try to identify my 10, I try to identify my kill list. And that's, that was me. Like I was hunting people. The way that manifested was when I was in a conversation with somebody, I'm not listening to what they're saying. I'm asking, can they help me? And if no, I'm losing interest and I'm looking over their shoulder, looking for the next better person. What surprised me was the most successful people in the room didn't do that. Mm. They showed up looking to give, not looking to get. And it was so visible because all the people who were there to network, it was very self-centered. And I was one of them, right? They were just, they weren't listening. They weren't engaging. They weren't trying to bring value. They were just trying to get. But the most successful people were genuinely present in the conversation. And I kept hearing these people over and over again ask, out of everything you're focusing on, where do you need help most right now? How can I help you? And it, it, it blew my mind. Like, why is this successful person asking if they can help me? It really left a mark. And I remember thinking, okay, this is what the most successful people do. Then I need to model that behavior. And of course, all the limiting beliefs start to pop in. Like, well, what do I have to give them? How could I possibly bring value to them? But something, in, and I remember thinking, well, I don't know the answer to that. Last time I checked, my driver's license doesn't say Miss Cleo. I don't have a crystal ball, but at least I can ask the question, 
right? And I remember, this is before I had even read the one thing, the lead domino for me, that tiny little action that I could do is when I started having a conversation with this person, could I in my mind ask myself, where might this person need help right now? Whether it came out of my mouth or not, didn't matter. I first and foremost had to internally ask myself, where might this person need help right now? And here's what ended up happening. In conversations, I started asking people out of everything you're focusing on, where do you need help most right now? And they started to tell me the answer. And what I quickly realized was I actually didn't have to be the person to give them the value. Oh yeah, if that's I good, dude. Connect, if I could connect them to somebody who could bring the value, I am bringing just as much value. So you don't have to have, be the person who can bring it. You can be the connection. Or third, I remember a person saying to me once, you know, I don't, I'm not that person and I don't know anybody, but I'd be happy to scout for you. If I come across a person who meets that mold, would it be okay if I circle back and make, made an intro? And I was like, oh, that was so good. And so I started using that. And lo and behold, people started flocking to me. So here's what happened. Jay gave the keynote speech. And the whole time I'm thinking, how do I get him to be one of my five? What could I possibly say to him to make him interest in me? What could I give him to make it worth his time? But then it hit me. Just show up with curiosity. So when he came off stage, I literally sprinted down the side of the room so that I'd be the first one to him. And I, I said, Jay, my name's Jeff Woods. First and foremost, thank you. Like, your message blew my mind. Like, I feel compelled to share this thing out of, out of everything that's going on in your world. Where do you need help most right now? How can I help you? And he said, we're looking to get more exposure for the book. And I said, well, I have a podcast called The Mentee. It's doing really well. I would be more than happy to share it with my audience. And he said, great, let's line up an interview. Get out of he, here. That's amazing. On the stage, baby, so after wait, he wait walks for, off. Right, wait for it. So that's time number one that I asked, how can I help? At the end of the interview, I asked, out of, out of everything you're focusing on, where do you need help most right now? How can I help you? He said, we're looking for more exposure. I said, well, I've got a lot of relationships with other top podcasters in the space. I'd be happy to make some intros and get you on their shows. He said, oh my God, that'd be amazing. So I made the intros and then I circled back. What are you focusing on? How can I help? That's the second type. Oh, we're looking for more exposure. He didn't know I wrote for Entrepreneur at the time. I just wrote an article and published it without telling him. And I tagged him and Gary and all my social media posts. And I start to see Jay sharing all my stuff. So oh, I wow. commented, what are you focusing on? How can I help? This is the fourth time I asked. And this time the answer changed. He said, we're looking for a CEO for a publishing company we want to start. And because I had become a super connector, I immediately thought of three people that could be a fit. And I said, I'm not the person, but I know three people that might be. Let's line up a time to chat so I can make the right intro. And when we got on the phone, Shane, he blew my mind because he didn't describe the three people that I was thinking of. He described me. Get out of here, man. So they, they've had this conversation, bro. They were talking to each other like, let's get that Jeff guy. Let's see if he'll uh, do it. Of course, once I got into business with him, I realized, yeah, he was, he was recruiting. Maybe. Yeah, man. I was showing up in a certain way. Yeah. That, and, you know, the benefit of having a job description, and by the way, a job description is not everything they need to do. We call a job description the two to three things they have to do exceptionally well or they get fired. Yeah. They knew the job description for this person was they had to be able to cast a vision. They had to be able to drive revenue. They had to be able to recruit people. And what they were really looking for was somebody with a strong sales background, with, who had a finance background, who knew how to turn content into dollars. I cut my teeth selling copiers for Xerox out of college, some of the best sales training in the world. And then I was in medical device sales and I was P-Club. So check the sales box. Majored in accounting. Check the finance box. I turned the mentee into a hundred thousand dollar business in the first year. I knew how to turn content into dollars. I was the bullseye for what they were looking for. That's amazing. And then, and, and, and it, it's, it's, I see this happen all the time. Like people will shy back from that question or introducing people. Like even at our events, like our own people won't always come forward or they might send us an email later. Like, oh, I was going to come say something to you, but you just got off stage or whatever. And like, but, but like it is that, are you stalking them? Or are you trying to help them, right? Are you trying to thank them? Are you trying to show a little gratitude? Yeah. And like, that's, that's how you led. And that's, that's why it worked. And it remind, dude, I just heard this yesterday. I was listening to uh, something uh, Russell was saying in Traffic Secrets. So I'm going back through that right now. Um, I've listened to it once or twice already, but I'm going back through it one more time because um, we've got some things for the next quarter we want to try out of the book. 
And Russell said something really fascinating that it's, it's this, it's what this is. Don't be the, the, the annoying person at the party, right? The, look at me, look what I'm doing. Got the lampshade on my head, right? Like, I, like look at me, tell, I mean, look what I do. Like, look what I sell. Like, don't be that guy at the party. You want to be the life of the party. You want to be the guy that asks questions. You want to be the guy that introduces, hey, I got a friend you would, would really love to meet over here. And like, that's really how you have to attack uh, social media or networking or anything is you want to be that connector. You want to be that life of the party. And here's what's crazy. Here's my transition back over to communities. You run a community, the one thing community. You all have that underneath your umbrella. Like we, our whole business is built on communities. That's what memberships really are. Like they come for, they come for the, the idea. They come for the, the personality. They come for the content, but they stay because you connect them with like-minded people that can help them. Sure. And like, that's what you did. You just started connecting them, connecting them, connecting them. And all of a sudden you get this massive opportunity because of all that, you know, it's amazing. That's right. That's right. Choking on coffee here. All right. <clears throat> let's, let's jump over into, I, I, there's a lot of, you've done a lot of great interviews. I listened to a few of them before we, we talked today about the one thing, <clears throat> the book itself and what the one thing is. And, you know, I want to go ahead and just recommend that book. It was one of the first books uh, that really took me and Jocelyn down the rabbit hole of, man, if we just get focused, we can make something huge happen. Right. So it's amazing stuff, but I want to focus in on the one thing community. So you've got this successful book. It's selling millions of copies. <clears throat> it's got this huge following. How does that lead to this one thing community? Why was there a membership site added? Why was, uh, why were these courses created into the, in the content area? Like what, what led to that discussion? Maybe at, was that after you got hired or was that already in the works? That's the stuff that I, so when I started, there was a book and they had started to build an email list. My job was to turn it into a company. So I think we have to fly to 10,000 feet. We're in the business of time. When you think about it, it's our most valuable resource. The problem is most people spend their time. They don't invest it. Mm. When you make an investment, you expect a return. We, we get this with money, but our time's more valuable than our money, but we don't hold our time accountable to the same standards that we hold our dollars to. Everything that we do is about helping people better invest their time so they can achieve extraordinary results. How we got to membership, uh, when, I, when I started, remember I said the three things I had to do exceptionally well, create a vision, drive revenue, recruit people. Uh, I was given a challenge to drive $100,000 in business in 90 days or I was fired. That's did they, did, it, did they literally say that to you? Like, hey man, 100 grand or you're out. Like, is that what they said? I kid you not. Wow. They said a job description is the two to three things you have to do extremely well, or it's not your job anymore. And I had to do three things in that we have, a, our onboarding process is called a 30, 60, 90. We give people very, very clear direction on what they have to achieve in the first 30 days to earn the right to get to 60 days and what they have to do by the end of 60 days to earn the right to get to 90 days. And if you cannot perform those things in 90 days, you are not a fit. The whole point is we want to, we want to throw somebody into the deep end of the pool, strap weights around their ankles and see if they can swim. Everybody looks great when you're dating, but what are they going to look like when you're in the middle of a battle mm. and everything is turned against you? That's how we make sure that we have talent on our team. So yeah, for real. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it went down. So first you're like, I got it. And then you're like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> right? it's like, Let's go. In my mind, I'm going, dude, most, but one of the highest rated business books of all time. They already have an email. list. like, how hard could this be? Right, right, um, right. So I just did what I had done before with the mentee was I, I asked people, where do you need help? <laughs> Uh, when it comes to the one thing, what are your biggest challenges? And I consistently heard this message that we really struggle to time block and battle all our distractions. Time blocking is, is scheduling time with yourself to do whatever you deem to be most important. People really struggle to do that and then battle the distractions that come up when you're in your time block. And so I pre-sold a course, a master course called Time Blocking Mastery, where we would help people identify a one thing and start time blocking it and go on what we call a 66 day challenge so that doing that one thing can become a habit that sticks. Um, and I've learned a very valuable lesson here. Um, I wasn't quite clear how well this thing would go. 
And so from a marketing side, we said, we're going to limit it to a hundred people. It was a thousand dollars to be a founding member of this program. We would customize the program to them. And we said, we're going to limit it to a hundred people hoping we might get 50 or so to sign up. We launched it. 205 people put their credit card down. Oh no. Did you forget to put the cap on it? Or in the- <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I learned a valuable lesson. Your values aren't their, your values unless they cost you something. So I had to refund 105 people their investment. Wow. Yeah. Which when you're not a profitable company yet, walking away from six figures. <laughs> and, you, and you're trying to get 100 grand into so well, many. You know, got so, 205 right, grand. You got 200. I know, you could have showed off in the meeting, right? You had to give it back though, man. Like yeah, look yeah, what yeah. I did. Well, exactly. Exactly. So we, we did that course. And then people started to go through it. And then same thing. Like, what are you focusing on? Where do you need help most right now? And it kept coming up that people were really struggling to live the one thing. It's great to start time blocking and to master that, but it, people really struggled living the one thing. How do you create a business plan that's aligned with the principles of the one thing so it's simple and everybody's on the same page? How do you have a relationship with your goals? Just like how you have a relationship with your wife where you go on dates and when things are good, you raise your expectations for the future. And when things are off track, you're changing your activities. How do we do that with our goals? We use a tool called a 411 for that. And we realize, you know what? From a business model standpoint, we'd rather be a membership-based business than a have to wake up and sell all over every minute. We, we, we want the forever transaction. Yeah. And so we, we made a pivot to say, we are going to be a membership-based business. And that's where Living Your One Thing came from. And that has been our focus is how do we help people go on a journey to better invest their time and achieve extraordinary results. And that's what we do in that community. And all the other stuff that we have done from like our couple's goal setting retreat spun out of that the corporate training that we do, where now we go into some of the largest companies in the world and change their culture so that people actually know what their priorities are and they actually do their priorities. All of that has, has come as a result of starting there. Yeah. I, the, the beta group is something, you know, like that's what we teach primarily is we, we're, we're like the mom and pop membership couple. That's what me and jo- Jocelyn primarily do. And one thing that we figured out, cause we've done like four or five different membership communities and we realized really early on, not just from an integrity standpoint, like you said, you were going to do a hundred. So you had to make the refund. It is really important to do a first group because you learn so much from that first group and you don't have to, you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself, right? Like to get everything right with that first group, the expectations are that you're learning. They can see that it's a small group, but they also feel like really loyal. Like we launched in 2014, uh, this flipped lifestyle and we still have, I think 50 of our 60 original beta members like in the community. And this is 2020, right? So like those, but that beta group and like making those decisions to, I don't know what the, I don't know what the right word is. Like to limit yourself in those first iterations gives you the momentum to actually make it a forever business, right? Because you don't have to get it all right. Everything. Cause if you have 8,000 people come in, that's cool. What are you going to do with them? How are you going to lead them? Right. How are you going to get it right? Well, you're always iterating. The, the, the flip that's happened for us is I was very entrepreneurial when starting. Like I just pre-sold an idea and customized it to people. And that got the business off the ground. But once that happened, we earned the right to be more purposeful. And this is where my partners really started holding me to a higher standard saying, okay, we no longer just pre-sell things. Yeah. We need to do our research. You know, Gary and Jay invested five years researching and writing the one thing before it was published. It's why it's one of the highest rated business books of all time. We needed to do the same thing with the business. So we're no longer just pre-selling an idea and then filling it and crossing our fingers, trusting that, you know, we're going to build the parachute on the way down from the airplane. Now we come up, we do our research, we come up with a clear model and value proposition and we deliver that. And the business has earned the right to go there. Yeah. I, I love, uh, I love hearing you say that like earned the right Oh, like, pay attention to the language. It is very purposeful. Yeah, very. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I heard you say that on another podcast too about something else with time or something. Like you earned the right to check your inbox. That's what it was. Like you, you, uh, like you, you try not to check your inbox in the beginning. You try to do your one thing first, but then you said, oh, I you know not, what? I earned I the right to check, check that. Email, first thing anymore. Right, exactly. Right. Like, yeah. The, um, but it's like, I, we, we're, it's kind of funny how entrepreneur, you want to come out and you want to make the course and make the process and make the thing. And we always hear that information, like ask your audience, those are really important fundamentals. There comes a point when you've got your 10,000 hours in, which a lot of people that listen to this podcast already do. They've got successful memberships, hundreds of people in their membership communities. 
there comes a point when you've kind of earned the right to, to trust yourself, to like know what your community needs and like to lead them and give them the next step where you don't have to always be at the beck and call of a group that you're letting vote on your thing, either with their wallets or in a survey. Um, like it was like membership masters, my paper newsletter. I didn't ask if anybody wanted it. I just launched it because I'd been in the game for so long. I knew this was the, I'm the doctor. I've heard so many symptoms. I know this is a cancer that I got to cut out of your leg. Right. And, and it launched and everybody bought it. And it was like, I didn't have to ask permission uh, to do that. But I think that's the, one of those uh, shifts. Like the first shift is, Hey, I can be an entrepreneur. I'm going to pre-sell this thing and see if anybody buys it. And then I'm going to survey people to figure out where I am. But then the next shift is, dang it, I am the leader here. And man, I'm seeing a need for my people. And if I serve them, it's going to 10X everything. I'm going for it. And, I, and I'm going to create it and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to stop asking uh, for permission. Um, and I think when people do that, that's when we see exponential growth in memberships. You go from 100 to 500 or 500 to 1,000, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ever see that? I, I look through. Now, so I'm a. We're, 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 we've been in the Russell Brunson universe. We're funnel hackers, I think, at heart. We're always looking. At, we're, I'm always watching the magician's hands to see how people are trying to, you know, do the tricks. So uh, it, as I, whenever I buy anything, I slow down. It usually takes me about an hour to two to buy something because I stop and I read this. Marking the funnel. That's right, baby. I'm looking through the funnel. Frank Kern the other day, daggone him. I, I had to hide my wallet. I was, he had an awesome funnel he, was re- he released, and it was all text. There was no pictures, nothing. And I'm like, this is genius. And I'm just going through it, taking notes. And before I knew it, I'd spent a grand, right? <laughs> I just like, I, I got to stop pressing buttons around here, right? So as I'm looking through your funnel, I noticed a couple things, all right? And I wanted to ask you about them because I think this is uh, really cool. Um, one, I love the structure of the funnel. Like you, you go sales page offer page checkout, right? Now this is, some people do it differently. They'll either put an opt-in first or they'll go straight to checkout. Once you click that button, quick, get their money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But your offer page blew my mind because you did a couple of things. Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at the one thing community, uh, that offer page. So there's three options on that. And I've, I've never seen anyone do this. Um, so the first option was a monthly limited access to membership, $35 a month. Now, it was over on the left, okay? And in the middle was this amazing option. It was like the all access pass, but it was annual. That was, it was worded what it was a month, but it ends up 14 day trial charge annual. <laughs> Fascinating. And then on the right, you had a free version that was called basics. And that was basically an opt-in is all that was, yeah. right? That was awesome. I don't know. So. I don't know how much you know about that. Maybe you hired a great marketer that did that, but like walk me through that and why those are the options because I've never seen anything laid out like that before. So here's a few things. Um, we have to fly up to 10,000 feet before we dive into that. When we started this company, you know, I was very much a student of Russell and all these other internet marketers when I had the mentee and I turned that into a business, which I later sold. Um, I brought that to the one thing. And we started, like we had our funnels and we had our agency that was driving traffic and we were doing all that. We had the upsells and the downsells and we had the webinar and the ever webinar and all that stuff. And I remember so vividly when Jay and I did our first sales webinar. And for a business that is just starting, that's not profitable yet, that doesn't have income, I remember we brought in $25,000. And Jay and I looked at each other at the end of the webinar and said, we can never do that again. (laughs) Why why is that? Why? Like what was the, what was the neg, the downside? We were doing everything that was a proven model for internet marketing. But what we understood was that while it brought us short term gain, it would undermine long term trust and brand. Yeah. And here's one of the first things that um, I learned. Gary's a self-made billionaire. That's with a B. He doesn't need more money. And frankly, there's no amount of money this business can make that warrants undermining people's trust in him. They care a lot about legacy. And the one thing, the reason it's so successful is because they've held it to such a high standard for the brand and everything, he literally said to me, welcome to Austin, congratulations, you're gonna need it. And I asked why, and he said, we invested five years writing the book so that the bar for quality would be 
here. Mm-hmm. Your job is to raise the bar, not to lower it. And what we realized was all these tactics that work in webinars with the copywriting and all that stuff, sure, it converts, but does it feel good? Does it build trust? And for us, does it help people save time? Did that experience help them better invest their time and achieve extraordinary results? And I hear all the answers about, well, the best way you can help them is if they become a customer. Sure. I get that. And what about all the people that don't become customers? Yeah. Because if they stay on our email list and all they do is buy the next book, it's still worth it for us. Yeah. So we eventually went away from the majority of the tactics that people call the tried and true models of internet marketing because it's not reflective of our brand. And this was a major lesson that I learned, which is be clear about what your, what your values are for your company. And just because something's a proven model doesn't mean that it's proven and it's right for you. So for us, we shut down all the cold traffic. We shut down a lot of stuff and shockingly the business grew. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So to get back to this sales page, you hit it. And we ask the question, how can we help this person? Well, from a membership standpoint, you can either be a monthly member or you can be an an annual member. And right now the pricing is monthly is 35 bucks a month. Annual is $2.99 a year or 300 bucks. You divide 300 by 12, you get $25 a month. So on the left, you see 35 bucks a month, limited access, annual members. You get more when you're all in. That's $25 a month in one annual recurring payment, or what about the other people? What if you're not ready to become a member yet? That's where we have our basics courses. So if you go to the one thing.com, and that's with the number one in the URL, and you click on the training page, the first thing you're gonna see are basics courses. These are the basic principles of the book in 15 minutes or less for free. Then we have our foundational courses. These are 90 minutes that help you start living the foundational models of the one thing. That's what you know, annual members get all access to along with a lot of other stuff. And then they have master courses in our corporate training and our coaching and certification, and all that other stuff. But we just wanted a page that would make it seem like such a no brainer to choose the annual option. And the stats backed it up. Prior to this, um, we had our previous funnel was it was a $1 trial for seven days that renewed to monthly. And on the upsell, We had a one-time offer that for the click of the button, they could turn their monthly to an annual. We had a 30%, basically 30% of the people who did the dollar trial took the annual option. 70 people did not. I'm going, holy crap, that's a great conversion. Yeah. But 70% of our recurring business was month to month and now susceptible to churn. When we made this flip to... You can do 35 a month. You can do 25 a month as a one-time annual payment of $2.99 or just start with the basics for free. 70% took annual on the front end. That's unbelievable, dude. Yeah, that, that's mind blowing. That, 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 I'm telling no you, I saw sell, that. No down sell, clean. Yeah, man. And like, I tell you what got, what got me about this unique funnel that you have here is, you know, like there's a lot of different ways to structure the, uh, for a membership, like, the, the, the entry to it. Like you can start with an opt-in that goes to a sales page. So you get the email, right? But some people don't ever put their email in. Or um, the way I've always done it is I really like to have a sales page and then you click the button to the options page. And then the options page, I'll do a pop-up that says step one. That's where I get the email. But what I love about this, this is freaking brilliant. Like I'm literally probably going to put this on my page today is I can't, I I bet your email list is on fire because like that first page is just a click. There's nothing to it. There's absolutely no friction. Then they land there. They're on the email list. You're going to get them eventually. You're the glacier. You're going to be a movable force. Like we got you on the list at least, but then you absolutely can gather up all the people who are going to spend up front because it's bold, bright and center, like right in the middle of your face like right there in front of you. And I've never seen anyone put an opt-in beside the options because the fear there, if we're all funnel hackers is, oh God, don't give them an option where they don't give you money. They've gotten this far, but no, you've given them a way to never say no. Nobody's, nobody backs out of the page, right? This is where you have to ask the question, what's the purpose of your business? Yeah. Why are you in business? And for us, it's not about the immediate transaction. Like we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard and not everybody's ready to become a customer right now. 
fine. Because the truth is, this was my aha. Because, you know, the one thing's in most of the airports across the country. We get people from, you know, Fortune 500 companies asking us to come and speak all the time. And I remember the day when I was speaking to a, a group of leaders for a Fortune 50 company. And I remember it was the point at the end where I should ask for their emails. And I remember not feeling comfortable sending them to our website mm. because I believed that the experience they were about to get would not be reflective of the brand because they would have gone into an automation that would have sent them 12 emails over seven days to get them on a webinar and followed up and made a purchase for four ninety seven, dollars And I remember going, we're missing the mark. This is mm. not right. I need to have an experience that any leader inside any company can come and feel like they're, it's going to build trust in our brand. Because the truth is, the thing that's most explosive about our business is that we do everything for the individual at scale. And what I mean about that is that the book was not written to the leader. It was written to the person in the cubicle. And as a result of the people in the cubicles buying into it, leaders buy into it. It's the same thing here. <clears throat> the living your one thing was created to help an individual start living the one thing. But now when we help companies make this part of their culture, sure, we facilitate workshops. We certify leaders inside the organization to drive the principles. But guess what every employee gets access to? living your one thing. Mm. There's the recurring. So instead of trying to do a webinar and saying, can I add 10, 50, 100 people to membership? We're adding 500 people, 1,000 people, 40,000 people yeah, yeah, yeah. to the membership because it's the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a buddy named Kirk Duplessis and he does something. It's the only thing I can, uh, he actually was on this podcast too. He runs an awesome website about investing called option alpha, huge company, like ridiculous. And he, he has a similar philosophy. It's more opt-in based. I think he kind of calls his opt-ins members and he treats them like a members, but it's the same thing. It's like the trust in me from what I give these people for free is so deep, right? That it's, of course, they're going to become a member at a higher level. Right. And it's, I love this option here. Like, you know, my, I love to water down the no on the options page. Like, how can I give you enough options where, you know, the back button is the devil? Like, don't, don't hit back. Please don't hit the back button. I got you this far. There is no no here. Like, that, that was what I thought when I said this. I looked left and right. I read your options and I thought, holy cow, there's no no. Like, there's no bail. There's no close the window. It's just, well, worst case scenario, I'll take this. Now, now you're, on, you're built. The relationship has started at that right. point. Right. It's, it's one of the best. I really want to give you some cred for this because this is a legit thing that I've not seen many people do. And I look at funnels for a living. <laughs> like I look at membership funnels for a living, dude. And this is really, really, really good. Hey, let me ask you a question here. Why 14 day trial? That always fascinates me too. Like we've settled into 30 uh, for Flip Lifestyle. Lower ones for our education company because teachers, I don't think need as much time to sort things out. But why 14 days? Um, Started with seven. Okay. And the truth is, let's fly back up to why are we in business? We're in business to help people better invest their time and achieve extraordinary results. And here's what became interesting. If we're in the business of time and respecting people's time, if they sign up for a seven day trial, we're making the assumption that they're prioritizing us over everything else to truly get a deep immersive experience. So that's too short, basically. It's too short. Day. Yeah. Uh, we also believed that 30 would be too long. And we thought, you know what? 14 days is enough time for them to dive in and get value. That's fair. Like, get this. There's a quote in the book uh, from F.M. Alexander. People do not decide their futures. They decide their habits. Mm. Their habits decide their futures. A lot of what we do is about helping people identify what matters most and form the habit of doing it. And we facilitate for our members what's called a 66 day challenge. We know it takes on average 66 days to form a habit. And a lot of people, we've had, gosh, 20, 30,000 people that have gone on a 66 day challenge and downloaded our one page calendar that you can get on the free stuff page. And most people that start a 66 day challenge don't finish it because no one succeeds alone. It's hard to do something every day for 66 days. And so we said, great, in this community, we're actually going to facilitate it and we're going to increase our odds. 
and the, the, the results are phenomenal with that. But what we have done this past year is when we are about to launch a community 66 day challenge, we tested doing a free 66 day trial. Not a dollar 66 day trial, and it's not a tripwire, free. A free 66 day trial that on day 67, you, you subscribe to the membership. And um, it blew people away. Our, our numbers were three times higher than any previous launch. Um, we did have more churn than we did in the past just because it's free to paid, but the net net was still higher in terms yeah. of retention. And here's the big one. We surveyed the people that opted out and asked questions. And the vast majority of them, uh, this was right when COVID hit, um, it was truly a finance thing which this was not the time, but what blew us away was they had such a positive experience with the brand. They couldn't believe that we did that for free. Yeah. And now we've got raving fans. Yeah. And they're going to come back when they hit the financial Bingo. thing goes away. Because right? maybe membership's not right for them. But if we, we know if we help somebody form a keystone habit, I am sorry, you are a fan for life. And maybe you come to our Couples goal setting retreat. Maybe you bring us into your company. Maybe you hire a coach. Maybe you want to get certified. I don't know. But, or maybe you're just a fan who shares the podcast. Yeah. Bottom line, it drives the engine of our business, which I should yeah. probably say this. Here's the business model. Content reach, engaged email subscribers, customers, profit, tech. How do we create content that reaches millions of people that builds authority and trust? That's conversation number one that drives people getting on our email list and engaging and building even more trust to the point that they become a customer, whether it's a member of the one thing, member may attend an event, corporate consulting, certification, coaching that creates the profit that funds us creating technology that okay. helps people better invest their time and achieve extraordinary results. So, so what's the tech look like? Like, what do you, like, is that like something that you, at least is a software or something like that? What's on the back end of that? There's a tech play here. Um, yeah. I, I can't talk about it. Yet, okay. So you're building that out right now. That's the place you've gotten to. That's where this that is going to go. Fast forward and imagine having technology that helps you invest your time. Yeah. And by the way, that has training behind it. Yeah. And will that be, well, Will that be recurring subscription type SaaS product, something like that, where they can get in monthly? And it's the, it's the next level of something for that? No. I, over the last five years, again, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, I made a very conscious choice to get into business with a billionaire. Yeah, for sure. To, Probably a good call. <laughs> I, Gary has always asked this question. Jay literally has it written on his whiteboard in Sharpie, so it can't be removed. What's the business that'll put us out of business? And how do I build it first? Gary's asked this question his entire career and he's blown up Keller Williams on multiple occasions. Over the last five years, I have watched Gary blow the company up from the inside out because he knew that the business that would put KW out of business was a tech company. So he figured, great, let's make KW a tech company. And mm. people laughed at him. The publications laughed at him. They're not laughing right now. KW developed their own cloud, their own AI. They have truly become a tech company that has won awards from Facebook, Google, like those companies are knocking on our door to partner yeah. with us. So I've watched that happen. And now I look at our business and say, great, how do we do the same? How do we create technology that helps you invest your time, that helps you have a relationship with your goals? Yeah. And what you're doing there is, is, is what's interesting. I was to tech stuff fascinates me. But at a higher level, it's even um, it's integrating your brand into their life or their business. That's what these tech things really do. Like Facebook in, in, integrates itself into our souls, right? Like, and if you can find that thing, that one thing that integrates, it's it's not just now. It's not. It's beyond a community. It's beyond a relationship. We are symbiotic. We we are linked. We are tied together because this thing helps you do your thing and. So all of a sudden you talk about a forever customer, like you're done. Like you, you can't unplug the pacemaker, right? At that point. He's shaking his head, folks. I'm seeing it right. He's going, yeah, you've got this, right? <laughs> I love it, man. All right, let me, let's back up, back to the membership. We'll talk about your world dominating technology player in a minute. I got one more question for you. So like, 
how do you got, no, I'm, I'm, I joined the community. I want to tell everybody that I, I, I'm a membership guy. I love jumping into memberships and I love the one thing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to throw money at these people. Let's do it. Let's get in here. So I'm, I'm into it, but I'm just looking at some of the offerings. You got an awesome, uh, uh, course area too, by the way. But the uh, now are you, is that on Kajabi? Is that built on Kajabi? It looks like Kajabi. Currently, yes. Yes. So Kajabi is a really interesting platform. Uh, we use Kajabi too. We recommend it to our people um, because we just we believe in their mission that tech should never stand in the way of someone making a living off of what they know. We we believe in that core value they have. Um, how do you create? Now, one thing that it's not great at yet is community right? They're still working on that aspect. They just launched their community platform. We're using it and we're helping, we're kind of going back and forth, trying to help them develop that a little bit. Like how, how do you guys build this community? Cause it's not enough just to have a 66 day challenge, which is genius by the way. And I'll attest to this. Uh, when the COVID virus hit, we did a 60 day trial first time ever. Our, our normally we can recover 55% of our trials in the first month. We only recovered 45 of the 60 day trials, but we literally sold three times more than any email I'd ever sent out. We said we did 200 in like three days. And I was like, that's crazy. So I can totally attest to that. But now you've got all these people coming in. Do you connect them together? Like, how are you creating this community around the one thing? Because that's really what's going to create that uh, this is, transaction. This is, what's, this is where our focus is right now is the retention side. So if we look at our priorities for the year from the business plan, retention is one, growth is two, operational stability is three. And one of the things that my team has done on the retention side is, is more of a focus on the connection. So less relying on the value being that they watch the course or that they show up for the group coaching call or webinar or that they engage in Facebook and more, how do we actually help people connect with each other and start living the one thing? So this is where, again, there's a gift in every shift. And we were already a virtual training company before COVID, but COVID just poured fire on that gas and, and um, we've made a lot of progress as a result of changing the way we look at things. And this is where I'm, uh, we're starting to hold more zoom calls where I'm starting to see how I can line the dominoes up. I've got all these people who are certified as trainers for the one thing. Well, they need the chance to practice. Yeah. I've got all these members that need help identifying their lead domino or help creating their GPS or help creating their full on one. Well, win-win. So this is where we're starting to line up a more robust training calendar where if you're a leader and you've got questions on your GPS, let's show up for the workshop. Let's do it. Uh, if you need help identifying what your one thing is, great. Let's show up for a workshop. Let's do it. You need an overview of the principles of the one thing. Great. Show up for a workshop. Let's do it. So the, this is where this is starting to go. And then we're asking the question, what's the tech we can weave in on the back end that can also help connect people and all build what we call graceful accountability. Yeah. Not punch you in the nose accountability. You didn't do it, but accountability in a way that feels good. So this is, this is the stuff we're working on right now. Yeah. And there's a, there's a huge piece of wisdom. I want to make sure everybody heard right there is the first thing you have to do is get members and then you can shift your focus to retention. And that's going to, which is actually the easier game because once you've got the members, you can start plot, you can, they can help you. The second thing I heard there was another huge thing. Wisdom is elevating those leaders in your community, right? Like uh, we had a live event last year, we had a hundred people and it was all sold on the back of come see Jocelyn and Shane. Right. But when we had at night, we had table leaders from the community, <laughs> bro. I walked in and I thought, ah, Shane's here to help everybody. They're all going to look at me. Nobody cared. They were out there like, oh, this person's a WordPress expert. Oh, this person's sale. And they were all went to those little tables. When you elevate those people in your community, the, the, the other people in the community flock to them because they want to be a part of that. to aspire to. Yes. Yes. I want to be a table leader. I want to work with the table leader and I get to, to do that thing. Well, listen, man, I know you got, got to run here, man, but I appreciate your time today, dude. That was I'm, I learned something today that I'm changing today. I'm texting my tech girl and I'm going to say, Hey, Angela, you got to change this. Cause like, um, when I saw that this morning, I blew my mind and all this stuff that we talked about today, man, it's just been so enlightening and, uh, just a different way to think about the, uh, the membership process, your core values, and really what a membership is for. And that's what I love about the membership model more than anything else. Courses, coaching, whatever is it, it you really can have a mission. And you can latch on to the mission and you can expand the vision and you can get a bunch of people to buy in. It's not just to get them to buy your thing. 
right? And you guys are doing like an absolutely fantastic uh, job doing that, Jeff. So tell everybody a little bit more about where they can find more information about the one thing, the one thing community and everything you sure. guys are doing. Well, you're already listening to a podcast, so I would just click the search icon on whatever podcast player you're, you're using and type in the one thing. That's three words, the one O-N-E thing. And then uh, the website is the one thing, but instead of spelling out the number one, you're using the number one. So the one thing dot com and if you go on the free stuff page you can see the downloads there on the training pages where you can see what what shane is talking about you'll see the free courses that you can see uh, the you'll see all the if you click on any foundational course you will hit a sales page that is reflective of what shane is talking about that drives you to membership so you'll see how a one-off and you should actually look at that shane uh, if you go to the one thing.com slash training you'll see that it actually switches that now there's a all a cart purchase a monthly purchase and an annual purchase so if they just want the course they can have the, that one course but why would you get the course when you could have them all for not much more exactly man good you stuff dude that looks like appreciate you man likewise all right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today's show. I know you had as much fun as I did on today's Membership Masters podcast. If you appreciate the work that we're doing here at Membership Masters for you and your membership-based business, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Go leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to audio content. And please make sure you give this episode a share on your favorite social media network of choice. Help us spread the word. Help us get it out there that memberships are where it's at. And if you want to build a million dollar membership of your own, I would love to help you do it every single day. All you have to do is subscribe to the Membership Masters Newsletter. The Membership Masters Newsletter is the number one membership marketing newsletter in the world. Each month I send you my exclusive top shelf print newsletter right to your mailbox. Inside, you will find step-by-step -step instructions on how to drive more traffic to your membership and daily instruction on how to get and keep more members every single month. Each month is written in real time and gives you everything you need to give yourself a raise every day in your membership. Membership Masters newsletter subscribers get exclusive million dollar membership funnel guides, a detailed daily marketing calendar designed exclusively for memberships, email templates and subject lines you can send to your list, as well as traffic strategies and retention tactics that keep members coming and paying month after month, year after year. I am so confident you will love the Membership Masters newsletter. I'd love to send you your first copy for free. All you have to do is go to membershipmasters.com and you can sign up for your first issue free today. Stop struggling with your membership marketing. Sign up for your first issue of the Membership Masters newsletter today for free, and I'll help you get and keep more members this month. That's all the time we have for this week. Until next time, be consistent, be prolific, be relentless. Get out there and build a million dollar membership of your own. We'll see you next time.